James Oliver Bright Gold TV in association with Macklin's Jim Marbella. With me I've got the Macklin's. What's happening, you alright? What's happening, James? You're alright, I'm alright. Should introduce you as world title challenger, really. What's that, sorry? Should introduce you as world title yeah. challenger, shouldn't I? Three times, yeah. Well, Three I, I, times. I, I, hopefully get another one, hopefully get another one. Indeed, indeed. Speaking of world titles, we're here in Boston to see James DeGalpha and Andre Durrell for the IBF Super Midway title. How, how do you see this fight playing out? I don't know, I think I don't know, it could go a few ways. Could be um could be a tricky fight, I think, because uh, obviously styles make fights and uh, I think if you're stationary you could be the strongest super middleweight in the world, biggest hitter. But I think that suits the guy if someone's pretty stationary and he can get his shots off. But he, he, he throws a lot of combination, throws punches in bunches and he, he gets good momentum, good rhythm off that. But I think with, with um with someone like the Ralu who might kind of mess his distance up, stepping out in and out of range. Uh, he, he might struggle with that for a bit, but I think you know he proved in the, the George Groves fight, even though he, he lost that fight, he could have gone either way. That when the first half of the fight didn't go his way, he did. He can put his gloves up and walk forward and grind out a victory if he has to. Even though, like I say, he didn't get the decision, but he really took over in the second half of that fight. So he, he, has, he has proven that he can uh, adjust and adapt in a fight. What do you think of the level of the opponent? Uh, Andre Durrell's face since the Super 6, since what happened with Arthur Abraham. He hasn't been the most active of fighters. Do you think that could, that could help James to go? Yeah, I, I, th I think, yeah, th definitely. I think it's, uh, James looks like it's his time, you know, I think, I think he's ready and you know, I think he'll definitely win on Saturday night. Yeah. I mean, it'd be a massive occasion for James to go to do that. Also making history in the first British, to British uh, gold medalist to then yeah, go on to win yeah. the world title. Yeah. How, how do you think he'll cope with that pressure? I think he'll take it in his stride, you know, you can see he's bouncing, he's confident, he's got massive belief in himself and, you know, I think he, uh, he uses confidence, so I don't see that being a problem. Speaking of someone else who's in confidence, what's going on with you? You look like, he's got turned on the Playboy model charm, <laughs> hasn't he? He's got rid of the Diego Four, man. Yeah, I needed to get rid of that, yeah. He's getting involved. <laughs> he needed to shave the beard, man. Oh, you, look, you look quite smart, mate. Quite a tough one, Debonair. Nice one, James. I say so um, obviously, aspirations for yourself, Matt, to get back in the mix at world level. Um, what, what's going on with yourself? Talk to me a little bit, mate. Yeah, well, um, I was hoping after that, uh, obviously I needed to get a win, I got, got that win uh, last week, and um, I was hoping then that the, uh, the Danny Jacobs fight might materialise, but I not, not, haven't heard anything as of yet uh, of what, what he's doing. I was talking to Shamus fight, but you know, they wanted that up at 168, and you know what, I'm only at 168 on the night, I'm comfortable at 160, so you know, really looking for a world title shot at middleweight, so we'll see what happens over the next few days and weeks. As you said, good win for yourself last time out in Birmingham. Do you think you've exercised those demons from before and kind of looking ahead now, as you say, to get back in the mix at one level? Yeah, didn't really have any demons, just wasn't sure whether, you know, I'd had my day and it was time to walk away kind of thing, but um, obviously I thought I knew I could still perform at the level, but I didn't want to just make up the numbers. If I, if I didn't feel I could really win a world title, then I didn't want to be, you know, hanging around or going down the levels. And, uh, you know, coming off that last I thought, you know, it, it was it was a bad night for me, probably, you know, style-wise, bad opponent. I think I'd had a bad year in terms of things just falling through, the Giel fight, uh, and before that, the Sturm rematch, looked like it was going to happen, didn't happen. You know, then obviously when Jamie got shot, it was just a long, long year. I've been in the gym, and I just think I was burnt out, and, and Jay did really come the night of the fight, but, you know, Coming off the last, it was like, going to think, how long is it going to take me to get back to where I need to be to get a world title shot? But, you know, seemingly, after just coming off a nice little win, even though it was a, a very routine win, there's, um, because I have fought for the world title three times and I have got big name recognition in, in, in America and, you know, in, in, in the middleweight division in general, then, uh, you know, I think opportunities should come, come knocking. So, like I said, the Chavez fight uh, could be there, but like I said, I don't really, I don't really want to go up to super middleweight. I'm comfortable in the middle, so, just going to see what happens in the next days and weeks, but yeah, no, no demons, just had, had a bit of time out, had a good rest and recharged the batteries and now I'm uh, having got a win under my belt, I'm looking forward to, to what's out there, see what's out there, what opportunities. I mean, what do you say to people that say, look, at this stage in your career, you've had a fantastic career, you've achieved so much inside the ring and outside the ring, not to least sponsoring IFL TV, which is a great achievement for yourself. What, <laughs> what, what else is there for you to do and achieve at this stage in your career? No, but I suppose if I'd have, if I'd have, if I'd have been if I'd have won the world title that night in Germany when, when I should have, I didn't win it, but I didn't get the decision. Maybe I would have retired after Germany. But the fact that I, I think the middleweight division, you know, was closed at one, was a closed shop at one stage at Pavlik, and then it opened up a little bit, and then it was, you know, Golovkin's kind of took over. But it's kind of after Golovkin, you know, Golovkin aside, it's, it is opening up. There's a lot of fighters there that could kind of beat each other. Obviously, Al Heyman going off from doing the uh, PBC. You know, there's a lot more dates out there now and there's a lot more opportunities and, and, and fights getting made. So, um, you know, Danny Jacobs, that'd be a great fight. Obviously, Andy Lee, 
would be that'd be the bet. That'd be my first choice, obviously. But uh, you know, he is, I think, mandatory obligations and things. So I think so, I think it might be a time to just be patient as well. I have a win there now uh, behind me. So you know, again, you're you're moving in a positive direction. So uh, look, you know, the Chavez fight, like I said, not really too keen on that because it's, it's up the super middle, which I say, I'm comfortable in the middle. So um, yeah, just see what happens. What opportunities come up the middle way, and it, I think. If, if nothing else, then be patient and maybe just get another win on the mobile and just see what comes. I mean, the, the TV kind of broadcasting side of it is something that you you come across very well at. I don't mind me saying that. And the fan, people on Twitter as well really really relate to what you say. Yeah. Can you see yourself doing more for Sky in the future? Because there's obviously a big a big demand for yourself to do yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, listen, for me, talking about boxing is the easiest job in the world. You know, it's a sport I love. I've, um, I've done things in a very unique way uh, in terms of... You know, I've trained with many different trainers, I've trained out in America for camp, so I've been around a lot of great fighters, a lot of great trainers, and you know, I think I'm, uh, I think I'm knowledgeable in boxing because of that, because of the experience, the, the different viewpoints I've spoken to different people. You know, there's more than one way to skin a cat, there's not just one set way to box, and you know, I've been around different trainers who do it differently to each other, and obviously seen lots of great fighters train different ways and with different styles, so I do think I'm quite, I have quite a broad knowledge of boxing, and uh, yeah, I mean, if, if, if people like the way I make my points, then I'm so happy about that. All right, well, listen, the Matt Lins, I can't thank you enough for giving me a bit of time. Congratulations to yeah. with Michael Mooney as well. Good to see him back in the middle. And uh, we'll catch you again real soon. Nice and Thanks. Thanks.